Hello, everyone. My name is Miklos Gaspar. I'm head of digital communications at the IAA. Today, we are live from Vienna, our headquarters. And this is, this is the premiere of a series of lives to discuss what it is like to work at the IAA and to answer some of the questions we receive from applicants. You too can ask us questions during the session and we respond to some of them at the end. Just put your questions in the comment section on your favorite platform. So in this first chat, we will discuss what it is like to work at an international organization, what impact your work can have, and what inspires my colleagues here on the, on the panel about their jobs. So let me introduce them. First, we have Anus Cabetancur Hernandez, Nuclear Security Officer from Cuba, who's been with the IEA since 2018. Then we have Joseph Adugyamfi, a soil fertility expert from Ghana, who has been with the IEA since 2006, helping countries from around the world in the use of isotopic techniques for improved agriculture. And last but not least, we have Christine Sim from Singapore, who heads our recruitment unit, and she has been at the organization for three years. So to start with, let me ask you, Anuska, what motivated you to come and work at the IEA? Thank you, Miklos. I am nuclear engineer. I, I work all, all my life in the nuclear field, first as a regulator for almost 30 years in my country, then a few years of, in an institution to promoting the useful use of nuclear application, the Pacific use, sorry, for nuclear application. And I, I participate uh, in, in several events at the International Atomic Energy Agency, meetings, conference, projects. I was uh, familiar with this organization and I, I considered to join, joining because I, I, I want to share my experience in uh, as uh, to, to, to support countries in the establishment and uh, implementing uh, the regulatory infrastructure for radiation safety and security of radioactive material. Thank you. What about you, Joseph? What motivated you to join the agency? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I was a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana. Uh, and uh, actually, I was uh, invited by the IIE to, uh, as, a, as a consultant, actually, to uh, help develop a proposal based on soil and nutrient uh, management for uh, food uh, security and also in agriculture. Uh, although uh, when I was doing my uh, graduate studies, uh, I used isotopes or nuclear techniques, uh, I, the invitation came to me as a shock because I knew that uh, IAEA is a uh, nuclear watchdog, and uh, any time I heard about IAEA, it was more of inspecting of uh, uh, nuclear facilities or uh, nuclear energy. Uh, so I have not heard of anything about IAEA working on uh, something related to food security and then also sustainable agricultural development. So that was a shock. So I just decided that, okay, I will come and see. So I came. Then when I came, it was really wow. Coming, I just got there and I saw all the flags uh, at the initially at the Rotunda. They were all at the Rotunda, and then uh, I also saw a lot of people. I mean, from a multicultural environment. And then I, I just said, yeah, I think it is it, it is a, a nice place actually as a scientist uh, to continue with my career and also join other scientists uh, to actually uh, develop uh, agriculture and also help in food security. Thank you. Christine, what's your story? Thank you so much. Um, so for me, my purpose of joining the IAEA, what attracted me to join the International Atomic Energy Agency was really um, a couple of uh, organizations before joining IAEA. I was able to realize the importance of medical isotopes and the impact of medical isotopes in extension of human life. 
um, or, or perhaps maybe even extending someone's life may be affected due to cancer or some other treatment. And for me, that was a personal uh, motivation for me to join the IAEA and to make a difference, really. Yeah. Thank you. So next, I'd like to ask you all about what's been a particularly meaningful or inspiring moment in your career working here. Joseph, what about you? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, to me, actually, uh, I was really uh, inspired at the IAEA for the opportunities actually to work with uh, a lot of uh, member states. When I came in, I saw about 100 uh, member states, the, both from the developing and then uh, developed uh, uh, countries. And what, uh, what actually uh, inspired me is to listen to them, uh, look at, uh, listen to some of their problems, and then we join hands actually to try to see how best we will be able to improve uh, agriculture and the uh, food security. I also realized uh, uh, the opportunity actually to work in a multicultural environment is really uh, very, very important. And also to see how best uh, I'm able to resolve uh, some issues, conflict issues in the multicultural uh, uh, environment. And also the uh, opportunity to see uh, people not only in my area, and not only in the area of science, but I saw uh, people from the administration, I mean, also from finance, from IT, and all this. And so these were all really very, very uh, uh, inspiring. And actually, one important thing is also the opportunity, because my, the nature of my work involves a lot of uh, traveling. So the opportunity to travel to a lot of countries, uh, do some training, and also have some uh, the, uh, discussions with them. Not only that, but also you get an opportunity to see their culture and also uh, very nice food or cuisine. You have the chance to enjoy some of this food. So uh, in short, these are some of the issues that actually uh, have inspired me uh, to work here. Thank you. Anushka, what about you? <clears throat> I was hired in 2018 as consultant to attend the regional project for Latin America and the Caribbean in relation to the strength and the national regulatory infrastructure for radiation safety and security of radioactive material. The project will be uh, uh, need to complete in one year with many activities. And, and for me, it was, a, was a, a very good experience because, because before, in my country, I participated in several regional projects in the Latin America and the Caribbean as, in, as Cuban a representative and, and sometimes as regional expert and, and have this possibility to, to attend this project uh, as an international civil servant, servant was uh, really, uh, I consider one of the uh, privileges in my life. Thank you. Christine, what has been particularly inspiring and memorable for you? So for me, um, well, I'm in human resources. So for me, um, finding the right person for a particular position within the organization to deliver on our mandates is so important. And for me is also to be able to uh, match the right person to the right job and help them develop their careers in, in the organization, not only in IAE specifically, but also within the UN job family as well. So for me, these are really particularly meaningful for me. Yeah. Thank you. So now I'd like to ask you about what, how is it different to work at an international organization compared to working for a national organization in your countries? Anuska, what about you? In my case, definitely, uh, my colleague mentioned before, the multicultural environment is, for me, it's good and challenging. Good because you have the opportunity to receive, the, to, to, to know the different cultures in deep uh, exchanging with your colleagues mm -hmm. and challenging because uh, each culture has a, a specific or different approach and different view of the life. 
but at the end, all, all together work to, to, to enrich the agency goals. This is, for me, the most important. Thank you. Christine? Um, I think, as, as both Anusha as well as Joseph mentioned, the multiculturalism, um, the facts of walking uh, on a, you know, in a corridor at the agency premises and to be able to listen and hear the many different languages, that's definitely something that is uh, very, very uh, dynamic and interesting. Um, in addition to that, you know, being part of the United Nations, striving towards achieving the sustainable development goals, as well as for us at the IAEA to try and achieve our gender parity targets for 2025, these are some of the um, these are some of the uh, impacts or key aspects that attracts me. Yeah. Joseph. Yeah. Uh, to me, we realize that. Uh, agriculture and environmental issues, uh, they vary from uh, country to country and also from region to region. And, and one of the important things that I, I, I realized here is that uh, I have the opportunity to work with more than 140 uh, mem member states, which most of them, especially in Africa, deals uh, with uh, agriculture. But the problem varies from one country to the other. So for me, the ability actually to, to, to work in the, in the regions, like uh, my work actually takes me not only to, to Africa, but uh, Latin America, Asia, Pacific, and also Europe. So trying to see a common uh, problem and then trying to uh, talk to the scientists to have uh, most of these things resolved at the regional level is, is, is really very, very uh, uh, en encouraging and uh, uh, inspiring. The other thing is also here, uh, as I see it, I came here and I've been able to also develop my interpersonal skills because there, there are opportunities uh, to uh, attend some of these IT courses and a whole lot of uh, courses that have also helped me to uh, actually uh, enjoy uh, uh, the place. And then one aspect that I also like is trying to actually see that uh, with, with uh, other, other people from develop, developing countries, at least our contribution have, have actually helped to improve uh, food security uh, uh, in the world. And of course, I mean, I also enjoy the safety uh, of uh, uh, Austria here. I really enjoy the, the city too. So, that's what I can say. Thank you. Well, many thanks to you all for your insights. Now let's turn to some of the questions we received from our audience. Uh, Christine, let me read to you the first two questions, one from India and the other one from Pakistan. I'm a medical physicist and I live in India. Can I apply to the IA for various posts? I want to join the IA from Pakistan. I would need some guidance. I have a PhD in radiation dosimetry and I'm working in a radiotherapy center. Sure. So just to uh, respond to these questions, so we advertise all our positions on our website in which you'll be able to uh, have a look and look specifically at each vacancy announcement, understanding a little bit in terms of what each position requires. You may need to, uh, in there, we also do state the qualifications, whether it's a PhD or perhaps um, a master's degree that will give you an indication in terms of the education level. We also do indicate the experience and the type of experience that we're looking for. So we do encourage you to please check out our websites because all our positions are posted on our website on our employment page and you'll be able to find um, the respective uh, qualifications you need to apply for those respective positions. Thank you. Eduardo Uribe is asking if all our positions, for all our positions, it's required to live in Austria or is relocation always required? Sure. So we have uh, offices all around the world. So our headquarters is in Austria and Vienna. But in addition to our Vienna office, we also do have a laboratory located in Cybersdorf. In addition to this, we also have a laboratory in Monaco, as well as liaison offices in Geneva, New York. We also have two uh, regional offices in Tokyo, as well as, um, as, and as I mentioned, in Monaco as well. So it's not necessarily just based here in Austria. 
for our professional staff, they are internationally recruited. We will provide you with support and assistance in visa. Um, and of course, we also do have a percentage of our staff that are what we call general service positions. And for those, these are locally recruited from Austria. Thank you. But basically, once this COVID is over, yes. it's expected that people will relocate or be located uh, at their offices. Yes. So we don't do remote work. No, likely uh, because most of our work is um, if it's in a laboratory, it's very likely you'll be needed to be based at the laboratory. So it really depends on the type of work, but most of our work, you will need to be based at the duty station. Thank you. Uh, another viewer is asking if they need to have experience in the nuclear field to join the IAA. So maybe I'll use myself as an example. <laughs> <laughs> so I have no nuclear <laughs> background at all. I'm working at, with the IAA uh, in human resources. So um, in our, we have six departments here at the here at the IAEA Department of Management. We have Department of Technical Cooperation. Uh, we do also have our, our uh, very technical departments, which is nuclear science and applications, nuclear uh, safety and security. We have nuclear energy, and of course, our Department of Safeguards. For not all our positions, we will require a nuclear field. We do have quite a number of IT type positions. We do have a number of finance, uh, budget type, program management, international cooperation type backgrounds, which we do not expect individuals to have a nuclear background because we have other departments to support us in that area. <laughs> Thank you. You didn't mention the most important, which is communication. Oh, we also I'm have. So, sorry. <laughs> um, so an, another viewer is asking if they need to have an EU passport or an Austrian passport to apply. Um, as mentioned earlier, that is not necessary. Um, again, um, as for internationally professional positions, the IAEA will support you through the visa process and the and to help you obtain a legitimation card or a residency card for while you're working here at the at, in Vienna or in the respective duty stations. Thank you. Thank you for all these answers. Thank you everybody for joining the panel and thank you all uh, for listening to and watching us. It's not this session is over, but this was just the first of the series of lives. Every month we'll come back discussing a different topic uh, with different guests. In the meantime, please check out our vacancy notices, our job openings at ia.org slash employment and subscribe to our recruitment newsletter so that you get first-hand notifications when we have new jobs opening up. Thank you, and don't forget to check the comment section for further useful links. Bye-bye.